Hello, my name's Simone Aspis, and I'm a Policy and Campaigns Coordinator for the Alliance for Inclusive Education. Welcome to the first webinar training session delivered by ALFI. Our first training session will focus on the principles of inclusive education. What does ALFI believe in? We believe that all disabled pupils and students must have a right to be included in all mainstream education settings. We believe that mainstream schools, colleges and universities should support disabled people to learn with their non-disabled peers. So what is and is not inclusive education? In this slide, you will notice there are four circles with different colored dots, either inside or outside the circle itself. The green dots represent non-disabled pupils, the majority, within mainstream education settings, including schools, colleges and universities. The red, yellow and blue dots represent disabled pupils and students with various impairments and health conditions. The dots inside and outside the circle gives a visual representation of what inclusion, exclusion, segregation and integration looks like within an education setting. The first image I am referring to is exclusion, which consists of non-disabled pupils and students represented by the green dots inside the circle. Again, you will notice on the slide that disabled pupils and students represented by the blue, red and yellow dots are placed outside the circle, which represents the exclusion of disabled pupils and students from mainstream education. Now I'm going to explain what is exclusion. Exclusion is when disabled pupils and students are directly or, or indirectly being denied access to mainstream education. We are now going to look at various forms of exclusions. Permanent exclusion is when disabled pupils and students are told to leave the premises for good by the head. Fixed term exclusion is when disabled pupils and students are sent home for a, for a fixed period of time by the head. Fixed term exclusion is when disabled pupils and students are sent home for a fixed period of time by the head. Informal exclusion is when disabled pupils and students are sent home during the school day, such as lunchtime or are placed on a part-time timetable. Exclusion can also take place on site when disabled pupils and students are sent out of the classroom to work in a different room or placed in an isolated room. My last example is that exclusions can take place when education providers leave disabled pupils and students out of activities such as plays, field trips and extracurriculum activities without thinking about and planning for their support needs. Next image represents segregation which consists of two circles. You will notice that the big circle will only consist of green dots, non-disabled pupils and students within an education setting. Here you will notice a second very small separate circle consisting of blue, red and yellow dots representing disabled pupils and students within segregated education. 
I am now going to explain what is meant by segregation. It occurs when disabled pupils and students are being educated in segregated settings assigned for disabled people with impairments in mind, isolated from their non-disabled peers. Segregation happens in different ways in our education system. Segregation happens in different ways in our education system. The most obvious form of segregation is the placement of disabled pupils and students in special schools and specialist colleges. Segregation can also take place in mainstream education, such as disabled pupils and students being taught together on segregated courses in separate classrooms and facilities. The next image represents integration. What you will notice here is two circles. The big circle consists of many green dots representing non-disabled pupils and students. The smaller inner circle in the larger circle consists of blue, green and yellow dots represent disabled pupils and students lumped together within mainstream education. Now I will explain what is meant by integration. Disabled pupils and students can be educated alongside their non-disabled peers as long as they adjust and fit into the standardised mainstream education settings. Some examples of integration taking place in mainstream education are as follows. They say deaf children, deaf children can only attend lessons if they're able to lip read their teachers. Disabled students with learning difficulties can only attend mainstream courses if they are able to work at the same pace as their non-disabled peers. Disabled pupils with physical impairments participation in PE are dependent on their ability to use equipment such as the monkey bars, climbing frames and skipping ropes. Disabled students with Tourette syndrome can only participate in the work placements planned by colleges if they do not swear or tick. Disabled students with visual impairments are freely able to use the school library if they are able to read standard textbooks. School admissions policy requires all pupils to be toilet trained and able to go to the toilet without assistance. Finally, School admissions policy requires all pupils to be toilet trained and able to go to the toilet without assistance. Finally, the school behaviour policy provides no exemptions for disabled pupils and students who have different behaviour patterns from their non-disabled peer group. The last image on its own represents inclusion. You will notice a single big circle consists of green, red, blue and yellow dots in different places. This represents all pupils and students, whoever they are, being included within mainstream education. Now I will explain what is meant by inclusion in education. Disabled pupils and students are able to participate in mainstream education with adaptations and accommodations made so that they're able to learn and socialise with their non-disabled peers. Inclusive education requires transformative changes and ch challenges to the existing structures of our education system. It will mean moving from a highly selective to an inclusive education service that allows everyone to access all forms of education, including university education. 
I will now give some examples of what inclusive education practice would look like within mainstream education. Lessons are tailored around the learning style preferences and the levels of ability of the pupils and students enrolled on the course. Teachers, learning support systems and pupils work together to shape the curriculum that will be of interest to everyone whilst ensuring learning goals are being met. Assessment uses a range of methods. Assessment uses a range of methods, such as exams, artifacts, and coursework for assessing disabled pupils and students' knowledge and skills. Which is sign language? Communication systems and English are all embedded within the curriculum and all aspects of school, college and university life, such as break times, extra curriculum and social activities. British Sign Language, Communication Systems and English are all embedded within the curriculum and all aspects of school, college and university life, such as break times, extra curriculum and school activities. The buildings, rooms, facilities and spaces that allow disabled people maximum control over their sensory, physical and emotional experiences. Support is arranged in such a manner that will allow disabled pupils and students to participate fully and with dignity within mainstream education. There are no admissions policies requiring anyone to meet any specific curriculum. There are, there are no admission policies requiring anyone to meet any specific criteria, such as being toilet trained or reaching a minimum standard of literacy and numeracy abilities. Schools and college behaviour policies that have the support systems in place which will promote the mental health and well-being of all pupils and students. Inclusion is about everyone playing, learning, working and relating together. Inclusive education is the education and training that everyone needs to value one another and feel they have an active role in creating a society that welcomes all. For more information about ALFI, see our website www.alfi.org.uk, email at info at alfi.org.uk. Twitter handle, Alfi UK. Telephone number, 0207 737 6030. We look forward to you, we look forward to you joining us for our next webinar on the models of disability.